Make sure it's pointing at the TV and not off some bizarre wall. Yeah. I have one that is pointing off over that way. All right, so the first one was the amount of kinetic. So the two words that we're missing was mouth and kinetic. Remember the amount, thermal energy is the amount of kinetic energy within the system or the object. The second one had to do with temperature. The key words in temperatures was the average kinetic energy. So the word average and the word kinetic was missing. All right? Then on the last one, uh, they are transmitted between the highest and the lowest. Yeah, I got that one. I got all of them. All right. So that tells me one or two things. Now, I can see y'all missing the last one. Because I don't think I had you go in and underline any keywords in the last one. But on the first two, I had you underline two key words in each definition. And guess what? Those were the two words I left out of the definition. <laughs> I'm just saying, you guys have got to do a better job of trying to remember and retain what we talk about in here, okay? But I knew y'all were gonna struggle with those three definitions. That's the reason don't be surprised if it doesn't show up again somewhere before we ever get to take the test. Okay? All right, pay attention. It's quite a bit of note taking at the first of this energy video. Energy transfer to its thermal energy store and its temperature increases. The process of heating them can take place in three different ways, depending on the medium involved. Okay, I think it's going to be a one. Okay. There is three different ways for heat to be transferred. Three different ways to transfer heat. That's what I want you to write down. Three different ways to transfer heat. And the different ways, it depends on the media that's being used at that time. Media means what? You guys that take art, what's medium? It's like what you use. Like if you're using water paints, then your medium is the water paints, right? If you're using charcoal, then your medium is the charcoal, right? So on this incident, the medium's gonna be, the video the other day we talked about a metal bar, remember, and a paperback book. Those were our mediums, yes? That was what we were using. So a medium is what you're using. So depending on how, what's being used to transfer through the energy through, depends on which one of these types of energy transfers what it's called. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have this down? Yes. For solids, heat is transferred by conduction. All right, solids. So this is what I want you to write. I want you to write conduction equals solids. Conduction is one of the terms that we will be learning. Of the, that's one of the three types of heat transfers. So you're gonna write conduction, write the equal sign, write solids. Just gotta make that, guys, conduction's right up here. All you gotta do is put an equal sign and then put the word solids, okay? Everybody got that? Yeah. In fluids, it's by convection. Convection is the second type that we're gonna be talking about of energy transfers. Has to do with fluids. Convection equals fluids. And after fluids, I want you to put in parentheses liquids and gases. After fluids, I want you to put in parentheses 
liquids and gases. Everybody got that? Yes. Still have a few people writing. Jocelyn, are you good, babe? Okay. And to get through empty space, heat has to be transferred in a form of radiation. And then I want you to put radiation equals empty space. <laughs> Radiation's on the board. R-A-D-I-A-T-I-O-N. Radiation equals empty space. with conduction. All right, now, from where you just wrote, skip a line and write the word conduction. And we're going to take notes, more specific notes over conduction. We already know that conduction equals solids, right? Yeah, really. So that means that the heat's going to be transferred through some type of solid, right? Yeah. All right. Is everybody with me on that so far? Yeah. yeah. The heat behind conduction is that vibrating particles transfer energy to neighboring particles. All right, so conduction is when the vibrating particles transfers energy to neighboring particles. Conduction is when the vibrating particles transfers energy through neighboring particles. Now remember, in science, we use energy and heat interchangeable. Vibrating particles transfers energy to neighboring particles. how this works. Let's imagine that you were heating one end of a piece of metal with a Bunsen burner. And imagine the piece of metal has a series of particles. At the end of the metal is heated, energy is transferred to the metal, or more specifically, is transferred to the kinetic energy store of the particles at that end. This causes the particles to vibrate faster, and so they fly to their neighbor. Which one of y'all are leaving? Miss Tina, may I help you? Yes, I do. Yes, I will. Granny, it's you. Huh? It's you. I'm not leaving. So I'm going to get you. All right, so what he's saying here is if you have a piece of metal and you're going to heat it up, wherever, whatever end of the metal is in the fire or closest to the fire, that's the end that's gonna heat up first. Now remember, in a solid, we have molecules, right? And they don't move a whole lot. They just basically vibrate off each other, right? They just bounce back and forth and vibrate. As the heat is being transferred, all of these have stored kinetic energy. What do we call stored kinetic energy? With a raise of hand. Potential energy. Very good. So they're calling it stored kinetic energy. We call it potential energy because it stored has to do with potential, right? So they all have potential energy in them. So as this gets hotter, the hotter it gets, the more those particles or molecules in there bang up against each other. And then after they get to moving, then they bang into this one. And then it makes it bang into this one, and into this one. And the whole time that banging's going on, that heat or energy is being transferred to each one. 
So, if you anybody here ever worked with cattle? Branded cattle? No. All right, so when you use it, does everybody know what a branding iron is? Yeah. All right, so when you use a branding iron, you put it in some type of fire. Now, some farmers used to, back in the old days, they just built a fire and stuck it in. Nowadays, they have little things they got built for them, and they have like a propane tank, which has that compressed uh, gas in it. So it has that elastic potential energy in it. And they use it to shoot the flame out to warm up the deal. Well, when you first start warming it up, the end gets very, very hot. The end where the letters are, or the design, or the picture. Most people around here uses some type of letters. Like my dad used RP. Anyway, so I could go over, when we were working cattle, I could go over and just pick the rod up without anything in my hand, a glove or anything like that, and could brand the calf and then put it back in there. But after a couple, I could no longer do that. I'd have to hold something to, on it with it. Why is that? Well, with the raise of your hand. Right, so when it first started, only this end was hot, so I could still pick it up and use it. But then as it as this works its way up, then it all gets hot. So how many of you have ever cooked in the, been cooking on the stove and you take a metal spoon and you put it in something and you stir it around and you leave the metal spoon in the pot and you walk off and go do something? And it's good. Now when you left the middle spoon in the pot, you were holding it with your bare hand and it didn't hurt, right? right. But when you came back and grabbed that metal spoon, what happened? It hurt. It hurt, it burned, right? Yeah. Because that all that heat energy had, had eventually worked its way up through there. So that's what conduction heat is. Is it causes the molecules or particles to vibrate and bang into each other. And as they bang into each other, it transfers the heat up until it all gets to be one even temperature. Okay? Or, or the heat has went all the way through it. Any questions on that? That is conduction has to do with solids. More often. And more energy. As the fluids transfer kinetic energy, the neighbors will also vibrate faster and apply more with their neighbors. And if this process repeats, energy is passed along the piece of metal until in the end, the heat is spread out evenly and it will be pretty much the same temperature everywhere. Now, the reason that conduction occurs mainly in solids is because the particles in a solid are held together really closely, which means there's lots of collisions that are half on the energy. Whereas in liquids and gases, the particles are all further apart, and so they don't collide as much. So we know that, right? From studying the states of matter. Exactly how well objects transfer energy <coughs> by conduction is known as their thermal conductivity. All right, so thermal conductivity, that means their ability to transfer energy or heat. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, right? So uh, when we talked about the metal bar versus the book, which one of those two items had more thermal conductivity? The metal bar. The metal bar, right? Yeah. All right, so that is how they, um, how well an object transfers energy is called its thermal conductibility. So thermal conductibility is the object's ability to transfer heat. Some objects' ability is going to be good. Some objects aren't going to be good. Why isn't paper a good thermal conductivity? Anybody know with the raise of a hand? Gracie? Because it burns too fast, right? And when it burns, what happens to it? It turns to ash. Turns to ash. So, you know, it doesn't really conduct energy very far, does it? And it doesn't hold on to that energy very long, does it? So therefore, it doesn't, it doesn't have a good thermal conductivity. Any questions on that? Georgie? Uh, is that why when you put ice in your drink, it doesn't always stay to the bottom, like the cold doesn't get to the bottom, just kind of stays around the top. Well, you your it. ice is more dense, right? Yeah. So that's what makes it float, because it's more dense than the liquid that it's in. But like, 
that is why the ice doesn't only make the top part of the uh, drink cold <coughs> instead of the entire thing. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay, when we get into another type of energy transfer. Has so everybody got this down? Yeah. yeah. I think the next one will help answer your question. Whereas plastics have a low thermal conductivity, which is why we use them as insulators. And pretty much all fluids have a low thermal conductivity. All right, what does he mean by a low thermal, ther thermal conductivity? We should know this from the other day, um, or from a week or two ago. Mr. Smith? It goes more slowly. No, well, no. Can somebody expand on that for me, Leland? The heat is not that hot. The heat is not that hot. Low boiling point. Low melting point. Do you remember us talking about the low melting point? Like butter has a low oh, yeah. melting point. It doesn't take very much heat or energy for it to melt, right? So it has a lower, which means not as good, thermal conductivity. You see what I'm saying? The metal has a high melting point. It takes a lot more energy or heat to melt any kind of metal, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, it does conduct energy well. Yes? Uh, the lowest melting point of a metal is a down one and it can melt at like that times so like 80 degrees. Yeah, it don't take a whole lot of heat, but it's still a better conductor of thermal heat than butter would be, right? Yeah. Or paper or, or alright? Remember, some more terms transfer from one lesson to another. Ew. All right, skip a couple lines or a line just so that it's broken up some, makes it easier to study, and put convection. Because mainly in fluids. And remember, fluids can refer to anything that can flow. So, we're both liquid. So, uh, convection is involved in, in mainly fluids, which would be liquids and gas. Okay, which we already kind of have that in there. Because the particles in fluids aren't fixed, once they're heated and they gain kinetic energy, they all move around faster. As a process of random diffusion, this will cause these more energetic particles to move away from the warmer region towards the cooler region. And overall, this means that the higher energy particles in the warmer region are a lot more spread out than those in the cooler region. So effectively, the fluid in the warmer region actually expands as it heats up, and so becomes less dense than the cooler fluid. Okay, so in convection, it makes the particles in the conduction, what move? Did the particles move or did the energy move? Or the heat, the energy and heat. Which move, the particles or the energy and the heat? Particles. What moved up the bar? Those particles didn't move. Oh, yeah. They just banged into each other, right? Yeah. Now what? Uh, so what was being moved through there? The heat or the energy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in convection, the particles do move. They move around. Okay, so you need to put that the part, the energy moves in conduction. Your energy and your heat moves during conduction. So you can go put that up there with conduction. That energy and heat moves through. And then in convection, you're going to put that the particles is what moves. And as they warm up, it said that what? The particles do what? They only move. They don't only move. What else do they do? They expand. In the convection, they expand. And then they become what? Warmer. Warmer, but they become less 
is dense. And if something is less dense than what it's in, what does it do? Sink. Does it sink or does it float? Float. So you should know from previous lessons. We have talked about dense. So less dense floats? Yes. Okay. The more dense an item is, it's the more likely it's going to float. Remember when we did all the stations with the raisins and all that? Yeah. All right, we got that down? Yes. The particles move, they expand, and they become less dense, which causes them to float. We have that down? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. understand how this works in real life. Let's imagine that we have a container of tea. So that could be either liquid or gas. As we heat the container, the following things would happen. First, the particles near the heat source would gain kinetic energy and spread out, becoming less dense. Because they're less dense, these particles rise above the colder, less dense particles above them. And at the same time, these cooler particles sink down and take their place. Whilst this is happening though, the hot particles would lose their energy and cool down, and the cool particles now at the bottom would heat up. All right, so let's talk about this with a more real life situation than this is. So how many of you have put a pot of water on the stove to cook your pasta in? Because we all know that we don't put pasta in water that's cold, right? Doesn't, it doesn't do as good. You want your water boiling and you want it hot before you drop that pasta in there, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you have a teapot, or maybe your grandma has a teapot, and they put it on the, the stove and when it gets to the right temperature, it starts to whistle? Yeah. Oh. All right. So this is basically what confection energy, or the confection, um, of moving energy is. So, you put your pot of water on the stove, and what's the first part of the pot that's going to get warm? Water. The bottom of the pot, right? Because why is it going to get warm first? Because it's, raise your hands, because it's closer to the heat, right? So, as the bottom warms up, then the water on the bottom of the pot is going to warm up. And as that water warms up, then those particles start to expand and they float to the top. But when they get to the, and as they're floating to the top, because they're less dense, they're floating to the top, that's pushing the cold, the blue represents the cold, that's pushing the cold out, down, and around, or around and down. Okay, so they come up and then those cold ones come down. Now, while the hot ones are up here, they're starting to cool off some, right? Because they're further away from the heat. But the cold ones down here, what are they doing? Warming they're warming up. So then that cycle continues, right? So that cycle continues, and it does kind of like a circle motion like this, or oscillating motion, okay? Until all the particles reach the same temperature. Okay, and once all the particles or all the water in your pot is really, really hot, what does that pot start to do? Evaporate. We're cooking here. Boiling. Starts to boil. And when it boils, when they come to the bubbles or the particles, comes to the top, what do they do? They kind of pop, don't they? Yeah. And they produce a what? Steam or a gas. And that's what makes your tea whistle whistle. And that's how you know your teapot has a whistle in it. Like this teapot, like I have a teapot over here. That's right. Right up here, right? Yep. Now this one does not have its whistle. But a lot of them do have a whistle. But how you know when this one's ready? How you know when everything in here is really hot? You can see the steam coming out of the spout. But, and this is a, a, a really old teapot. No. <laughs> so uh, the newer ones or more modern ones, they have like a little device on the end of it and it makes a whistling noise as the steam goes through it. 
So the warm particles float to the top, the cold ones come back down and around until they warm up and then they go, so it's like a continuous cycle, okay? That's confection. They're continually to move. It's a continuous thing. How many of you have a confection oven or knows the difference between a regular oven and a confectional oven? I've heard of it. A regular oven, when you use it, it just warms up the whole oven and there's no air circulating. You put your food in and it cooks. On a confectional oven, the whole time it's warming up and the whole time it's cooking, there's air. It blows air. You have a little fan that blows air into the oven and that air is doing that circling motion. Okay? So that makes your food cook um, a little bit faster and a little bit more evenly. So like when I make cookies, and when I first got my confectional oven, the edges of my cookies were getting done before the middles of my cookies were getting done. So what I had to do is I had to make adjustments. So I turned my um, heat down to 325 instead of 350 because they do cook at a faster rate. It's, it's not a higher temperature but the way the air circulates through there, it makes it cook at a faster rate. And I didn't want that. Are, there, are those new ovens? No. Yeah, the oven, like the oven I had when I built my house, which is what I have, um, it's set where I can cook either way with it. If I push one button, it bakes like a regular oven and it doesn't blow the air. If I push it, the, one, the other button that says, guess what that button says? Confectional. <laughs> when I push that button, then the fans kick on and it blows that air around. Okay? So, any questions on confectional? No, ma'am. Need to know that the particles move, not the heat. Okay. And you need to know that it is a continuous motion. Okay? So fluid is being heated. And we call this cycle a convection current. And that cycle is called a convection current. That continuous cycle until that water or whatever you're heating up, that liquid, whatever kind of liquid it might be, gas, soup, water, coffee, it continues to move until it reaches a certain temperature. And that's called a current, it's called a conventional current. So it's kind of like the currents on the, in the ocean, they move in and they move out, right? And it's continuous, it never stops. That's the same thing as this, but instead of moving in and out, they move up, around and back down. Okay. We actually see these convection currents all over the place, from oceans to inside buildings, where radiators warm the nearby air and set off the cycle. On the other hand, to reduce convection, we need to stop the free flow of fluids, which is all we're doing when we sleep under a blanket at night, which is stopping the warm air from escaping. So how many of you uses a different blanket in the winter time than you do in the summertime? And is the blanket that you use in the winter time or more okay. blankets, are they thicker? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and why do you do that? Because it's warmer. Warm. Because you want to stay warm, right? Because the air outside's cold. Well, that thicker blanket holds, kind of like them thermal underwear we talked about, <laughs> holds that heat in, that natural heat that you produce, that thermal heat that you have, it holds it in and it doesn't let it escape. The thinner the blanket, the more opportunity Warmer. and the easier it is for that thermal heat to escape into, into the rest of the room. Does that make sense? Yes. What conduction and convection have in common is that they both involve particles gaining kinetic energy. All right, so what they both have in common is they both contain particles 
that are gaining kinetic energy. It's just on the conduction, the particles don't, don't move from location to location. They just bang up against each other. And on the, huh? They both contain what? They both contain gaining con particles that are gaining kinetic energy. They both contain particles energy. Gain, that are gaining kinetic energy. Just that conduction, the particles don't move, that energy or the heat moves. In the convection, the particles actually move. They don't just vibrate and bounce off each other. <laughs> huh? Is what? Okay. What conduction and convection have in common is that the particles gain kinetic energy. And we know that kinetic means what? Uh, movement. movement. Okay? Or motion. So, the difference, but remember, this one, the energy moves up. This one, the particles warm up. So, in this one, there is movement, but they don't actually move from one location to another, right? In the conduction. They just bang up against each other. In the convection, they actually move from one location to another. Does that help, Linda? All right, be quiet. We got one more definition, one more type to get through before that bell rings. Energy, energy is transferred between the different particles, whereas in convection, the particles themselves move. However, heat energy can also be transferred without the particles which means it could travel through a vacuum. All right, so now I want you to skip down a couple of lines and you're gonna write radiation. 